My name is Julia Arciero. I'm faculty at IUPUI, which is Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. Well, I think probably one of the biggest advantages of using mathematics in biology is learning more about the biology. So the, one of the main goals is really to develop models that explain and help to predict uh, things for a biological problem. And so when you think about modeling, you're not really just looking at patterns and data, but instead you're looking at finding fundamental mechanisms that are describing the problem that you're trying to understand. And then in so doing, you know, you're, you're building these models driven by biological theory, and then these dynamics can give out very interesting and very helpful predictions. And so it really furthers along bio biology itself. Um, and then I think another nice thing, you know, we often hear about knockouts in biology experiments, but you can actually do a mathematical knockout, if you will, um, where in your model you kind of zero out a certain term, and then you really understand what was the impact of that term on your model. If you can really just easily zero it out, um, as opposed to maybe in a biological setting where it's, everything's very interconnected, so it's a little bit harder to, to establish that. So probably in all of my work, I've been looking at how mathematics connects to biology, whether it be um, in cancer modeling or blood flow regulation modeling, inflammation, cell migration. I, I've always looked at these connections. Um, I guess one thing that pops into my mind as just kind of a simple example of this connection was a model I worked on of necrotizing enterocolitis, which is this disease that affects premature infants. And the idea was, can we use mathematics to build this model uh, that looks at if probiotics or good bacteria can be a treatment for this particular disease. And so in so doing, we saw that yes, the model predicted in most cases probiotics were helpful and that what usually would have been a disease case became healthy if you treated with probiotics. However, there were some regimes where, based on different parameters and things, that actually the baby did worse if you gave the treatment than if you didn't. And so these were some model predictions that then we went to compare with the experiment and saw, indeed, probiotic treatments usually decrease the incidence of neck, but there were cases where babies actually became septic once you gave them this treatment. So you saw this exact uh, connection between what we could see in a model and what was verified experimentally. Now, given the fact that the model can predict this, can we compare, can we make a quantifiable um, comparison between what these parameters mean in our model to what you can measure experimentally and can you detect is it a dose of the probiotic, is it um, some other condition or pre-existing condition in the baby's gut that's going to put the, the infant in that regime which causes them to, to not succeed on that treatment. So, well, I think, I mean, the whole goal of, of mathematical biology is to have some sort of impact on uh, the clinical or experimental world. That's certainly the goal, and I think there have been advances in, in the sense that, you know, we've guided, guided experiments in HIV models and H HIV therapies, cancer therapies, malaria, and different epidemiological situations. So I think at least we're beginning to have some impact on, on these types of areas, and I think we're just seeing the start of the potential that mathematical biology can have. And of course, we've seen it, um, mathematics has contributed to the Human Genome Project and, and protein mapping and so many other things um, that I think we're really at kind of a beginning stage of seeing how important it will be to Im implement mathematics in biology. So, you know, biology is probably one of the most complex, if not the most complex, science to model. And so mathematics um, is really this language and this tool that's, that's really helped to understand and, and model some really complex situations. But the outcome of those models won't only, if, you know, won't only have application in that particular biological problem you're studying, but actually can answer things in other areas of science for the whole scientific community. I had a friend who did elasticity theory 
and she used it for plant growth and understanding it, but it certainly also had application in buckling of structures. Um, so that's just one simple example. But I think, I think that it's a, a really important um, avenue. And I think not only is it that the end product that will help um, all, further all of science, but I think it's actually the steps you make along the way, the steps that you do while modeling. You know, you're using different techniques and different methods f from a multitude of areas, but those also can apply to a multitude of areas, not just your end product you're trying to get, but um, just advanced science all, all around.